Hi everyone. All right, today we are gonna be comparing and looking at genetic evidence and how that relates to evolution. So we are going to be looking at evidence, sorry, at sequences of amino acids or base pair sequences for different proteins in different organisms. And so what we know is if an organism has more similarities in its DNA, then it's more related to um, the other organism. If they have more similarities, they're more related. If they have more differences, they're less related. So we are going to count up the differences between each of these organisms and make a little chart, okay? So we're gonna first compare the human um, amino acids in one small part of hemoglobin to the gorilla amino acids in the same small part of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the protein found in your blood and it is just like D DNA is universal. So we all have similarities of our DNA across all species, even with yeast, as you saw in the video. Hemoglobin is a protein in all these organisms, but it is a little bit different between the two. Okay, so let's look at our human and our horse. First, we've got lysine and arginine. That's a difference, one difference. Glutamine and lysine, that's another difference. Histine's the same, and isoleucine and lysine are different. So we have three differences between the human and the horse. Okay, we look at the human and the gorilla, we have lysine, lysine, glutamine, glutamine, histine, histine, and we have one difference, isoleucine and lysine. So we're going to write one difference between the gorilla and the human. Okay, we look at the human and the chimp, lysine, lysine, glutamine, glutamine, histine, histine, isoleucine, isoleucine. So how many differences are there? in this part of the hemoglobin between the human and the chip. And that's zero. All right, and then the zebra and the human, lysine and arginine, glutamine and lysine, that's two, histine, that's both the same, isoleucine and arginine, that's another difference. So there's three differences. Okay, if we look at the horse, we can compare the horse and the gorilla. We don't need to compare the horse to itself because we know it's the same. And we actually already compared the horse to the human before. So that's why I'm going straight to gorilla. So arginine, lysine, they're different. Lysine, glutamine, different. And then the last two are the same. So there's two differences between the horse and the gorilla. The horse and the chimp. I want you guys to count the differences. All right, so how many differences are there between the horse and the chimp? Okay, and then the horse and the zebra. Look at that yourself as well. How many differences are there? Okay, yep, and there's one difference. And then we'll do our gorilla and our chimp. There's one difference. And our gorilla and our zebra. One difference. Two differences, that's the same. Three differences. And then our chimp and our zebra. This is different, different, the same difference. So three differences. All right. So let me make this a little smaller so that you can see the whole picture because this part, oh, here we go, there we go. All right, so let's look at this. These are differences. So based on this information, which two organisms in this chart are most related? Okay, so most related would mean least number of differences. So the human and the chimp have zero differences in their amino acids in the small part of the hemoglobin protein. Therefore, based on this data alone, Humans and chimps are most related out of all of these guys, okay? If we were to look at which two organisms are least related, what would we say? Okay, right, so we don't actually know who's least related. There's a tie, a multiple way tie. We know the human and the horse have three differences, but so does the human and the zebra. 
So does the chimp and the horse, and so does the gorilla and the zebra, and the chimp and the zebra. They all have three differences. So we actually don't know who is least related to each other based on these four protein, uh, four amino acids in this one protein. So how do you think we could be more specific to understand which organism is least related to itself? Okay, so you're gonna think about that. All right, so what we're gonna be doing, now that you understand how we find out those differences, you are gonna be creating a phylogenetic tree using the genetic differences between a whole bunch of animals, the tenrec, the opossum, hedgehog, armadillo, elephant, horse, shrew, dog, chimp, and mouse. So you're gonna answer these observations. I'm not gonna go over with those with you. Answer all these questions. Make sure you explain why. Now, instead of just looking at how things look, we are going to look at the CO1 gene in different organisms, and we're gonna determine which are most related and which are least related and build a phylogenetic tree. Okay, so think back to what you know about phylogenetic trees. Remember, more closely related groups are linked by shorter branches. That means they evolved from a more recent common ancestor. So based on that knowledge, are archaea or bacteria, which kind of bacteria, archaea or, bact or regular bacteria, are more closely related to eukaryotes, okay? So write which one you think, circle which one you think, and explain why you know. All right, so here are some organisms, different organisms than before. Okay. This time we're not going to have to count up the differences. They're already counted for you. So you are going to use this table. Notice these are the differences, not the number of similarities. You're going to use this information to write in first which organism is most closely related to the cow and which is least closely related to the cow. And you're going to write that down. Okay. Now we're going to complete the phylogenetic tree. And this is data table one. So this is the data you're using to fill in this tree. So right here we have a tree. And it has platypus, possum, tenrec, elephant, armadillo. And then it has some blanks. Okay. So from your options, based on their DNA and how similar or different they are, you're going to put the mouse, hedgehog, shrew, dog, and horse in the right spot. Okay. So some tips for you on how to get this done. I thought I had a spot that says tips. Yes, it's up here. All right, tips. Okay. Remember that organisms that are more closely related to each other are going to go closer together on the tree. Okay. I would personally start by looking at the cow. Think about the organisms that are most related to the cow. Okay, and put those closest to that cow in the phylogenetic tree. And then work from those. Because you know how related everything is to the cow based on your chart, right? We've got our cow, and we, we know how related it is to everything else. Okay, you're gonna fill in this tree, and you're just gonna write the organism names right here, and then you're gonna answer the questions. Make sure you're answering the why or why not part. Don't just give me a one word answer. Okay? All right, email me if you have questions, and I'll talk to you all later.